Uh, first entry always is going to fail. That's the whole point. They're triggering stocks. Second entry sale, guys. Again, second entry, folks. It's always going to be. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Uh, there was no broadcast uh, yesterday. Um, I was ready to record the video. I usually take the night off on Thursday. Uh, but my son had um, a basketball game that was pushed up and had to drive into a different town and blah, blah, blah. So I couldn't record the video. So recording it tonight. So hope everybody's doing well. Um, so very, very odd day, right? We spoke about a couple levels pre-market um, that I believe were going to be very, very important uh, for any type of continuation back to the upside. Yesterday, without recording the video, was the first time we saw strength in a very, very long time. And it felt like months and months and months, but it's been like five, you know, four or five days. And the strength not only came from uh, a lot of the beta names, right? Uh, the strength came from a lot of names that just got absolutely destroyed, like literally destroyed for weeks and weeks and months and months. So names like, for example, like a SKLZ, right? Like a name like this just got, you know, got murdered, had big, big runs. Even NKLA, the, the forgotten fruit uh, of the eBay names, right? So a lot of these names, you yeah, saw similar charts. And this was kind of a really, really good macro feel yesterday kind of going into today's session. And the one thing, one question uh, that we had going into today's session was, well, was yesterday just a one day wonder that all the garbage, all the septic tank kind of rallied all at the same time? Because at the end of the day, we're still in the supply. Or is this finally, right, kind of like what the bulls needed, baby steps, kind of a breather and just kind of wake up and start put, putting our next leg higher. And the two areas that we started talking about today uh, at pre-market uh, at Morning Strategy was these two channels here. And these two channels were back-to-back uh, -back days. We stopped at 339.50 on the QQQs. So any close above that 339.50 on the QQQs would have done two things. Number one, would have taken out two days of previous range, but more important, reclaimed the five-day moving average. And again, five-day moving average, for me at least, is the short-term sentiment of it all. And it really gives you a pretty good idea of what's going to happen for the next day. And everything was going great, right? Like literally everything was going great. A lot of names were kind of bouncing and starting to reclaim levels. Apple was sitting at a good macro range, reclaimed the five day and all dude had to do is close it. Uh, Tesla was ready to close at its highest level in this whole formation, right? Very, very close. Like everything looks super good for tomorrow. And a few things still do. And then somewhere around, and again, Q's got above this 339.52 level. They were approaching that 340 level. And I, I, I have to apologize to everybody in trading. I really do. The whole trading community. I tweeted out, if you go on my regular Twitter feed, you'll see it. I tweeted out maybe a, a minute, a minute and a half before this news. And I said, hey, if the market just closes like this, right? If the market literally closes like this, we got some really good premium tomorrow. What have been what, what great have been about tomorrow's session was tomorrow on any reclaim on the five-day moving average, that would have been today, uh, confirm and option weekly expiration, right? So you had like a perfect world, a perfect stew brewing. You had everything going on for you. And right around here, right around here, and you could see it right around here, around the, let's just call it around the two o'clock area, right? You started seeing these headlines come across about Biden's whole plan. I think he called it a family plan, whatever the case may be, without going into details, because everybody, you know, you, you can go on any website, any you know, blog and anything, read, read the fine print. But there was going to be a pretty aggressive tax uh, coming on, on, on board, right? And I, I don't want to get into it, right? I really don't. Uh, more important, what, what bothered me was, number one, we really screwed up a very, very premium day. And, you know, 
because this tax affects so much, right? And so many people and, and high net worth individuals and all this kib and caboodle, right? Throw it all in there, right? We got sold very, very aggressively. So not only that the, this headline ruffles some feathers, but it really took down what tomorrow could have been a phenomenal day. And that's where I'm a little bit perturbed. That's kind of the word I want to use. And the one thing that we always know as traders, no matter what we think is going to happen, we talk about this all the time. We, you know, we're, we're in our heads. We're formulating an opinion. We have our game plan. Everything is going to be right, right? We're going to log off and look at charts at the end of the day. And it's going to confirm to us that tomorrow has a lot of meat on the bone, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, not so much. Uh, Biden comes out uh, with his whole at least tax plan. Uh, and the cues literally, I mean, this is, I mean, this is a pretty substantial candle. The cues literally go from 340 uh, all the way down to three. You talk about a $6 candle on the cues just like that. And just like that destroyed 90% uh, of the setups uh, for tomorrow. The only good thing is, again, we don't sit there and, you know, be wall, you know, start, you know, being miserable and crying in our own tears and crying ourselves to sleep. There's both sides of the market. So if there is kind of a knee-jerk reaction back to the upside, there are setups still to the upside. I mean, they're very, very, you know, they're not easy to find, but, you know, just to give you an idea, there are some names I still like to the upside, right? If you look at names, for example, like CRM held very, very nicely. Uh, it's actually ticking up a little bit. If they could confirm this whole channel here, uh, it can go higher, right? Not bad. Uh, HZMP, another name that looks interesting. I, you know, I really don't know the name, but look how close it is uh, to kind of getting above this channel. And if we start selling off here, look, you got Starbucks, right? We got Starbucks setting up to the downside. You can see it here, right? You know, you had two days in a row, excuse me, three days in this whole channel, literally defending the same area. And again, I'm not saying it's going to collapse tomorrow, but the point is, if it finally confirms these two channels, again, this is a very viable short setup. Even NVIDIA that caught a pretty disgusting candle today uh, towards the dump. I mean, look at this candle on NVIDIA. I mean, this is like no joke, right? So even the NVIDIA that took out the previous channel's low still has like five to seven points uh, in the trade as well. So we definitely have some setups for tomorrow, long side, short side. But if everything played out well, and if Tesla closed where it did, we would have a monster, monster, at least premium session for tomorrow. But as the saying goes, life gives you lemons, right? You make lemonades. There's nothing absolutely you could do about it. Again, complaining and moaning and uh, all that stuff that you, you, you know, you're doing to kind of put out negative energy into the world. Nobody cares, right? Everybody has their own problems. Everybody has their own issues. Everybody has their own story. And as much as everybody loves each other in Kumbaya and let's hold hands, everybody's responsible for their own self. So the moral of the story is, you know, give life back what life is going to take give you. And the more important part is be always proactive. There's always worse things. So yes, is it horrible that we, you know, got pretty much shut out tomorrow of pretty, you know, really, really A plus setups? A hundred percent, a hundred, a hundred and fifty percent. But again, it is what it is. Our jobs is to collect the data, push forward and keep on going. Stiff upper lip, smile on your face and love life. The ironic part about today's session, which which I kind of liked, right? I saw a lot of beta names, and I, and I kept on saying this in the webinar, setting up for tomorrow, right? Um, and I really liked that the mid-tier like names, they did very, very well today. There was a lot of lower price names. I'm not talking about small cap stocks, but there was a lot of lower price names that I was putting in pivots, had really, really big moves. And it, it, you kind of saw that the market had a really healthy attitude about it. It was ready to go and yada, 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 Joe Biden, thank you very much. So uh, let's talk about you know, the macro area first, and then we'll kind of uh, go run through the pivots uh, from this morning. So if you look at the channel here, you're not going to really gain a lot of really good information. We do know that we could have, should have, would have, and all that good stuff if the set line didn't come out, but it did. So we know this channel here, this 340 level going forward on the queues is going to be pretty important. And the good news is for the bulls, and again, I don't think this is a tragic headline by no means. Remember, everything needs to be passed and there's war of words and there's war of, of parties and all that stuff. So nothing's ever a slam dunk. But if you actually read the headline, it's pretty, it's not good. But so we know the top of this channel here, 340. We also know the bottom of this channel here, 
of roughly this 333, 334 level. So something is going to give. The only downside I can see is if nothing really gets established tomorrow and one side doesn't really pick and choose, we could be looking at a kind of a, a mid-tier, you know, rock and sock in between the bulls and the bears with a pillow fight, right? Not really getting in area, no fear to the downside, no uh, strength to the upside. I could see like a lot of traders kind of taking tomorrow as a digestion day, kind of really trying to uh, dissect today's information and how real it actually could be. I could see that, but that's why, again, we always uh, try to formulate a game plan both to the long and to the short side. So if there is no really, really good value one way, there's always probably some value uh, on the other way. So, you know, going into tomorrow, I want to kind of give the bulls the benefit of the doubt just because they were, they were acting so well, uh, so well from like for 85 percent of the day. But at the same time, look, I'm not kind of, I'm not you know naive to know there's both sides of the market. And if the bulls you know can't put up a fight, the bears are always uh, willing to take their lunch money. So let's let's kind of give the bulls the benefit of the doubt tomorrow. But again, if they don't start rallying and successfully taking mid tier levels after 10, 11 o'clock, we might have to start looking at the other side. So let's talk about today's session. Uh, Tesla gave us today three three really good opportunities. And it's not going to come across as great on the Twitter feed. But for all you guys who are trading the live webinar, you kind of know. So we started buying. Everybody knew that 750 was going to be a macro number. So Tesla had a monster pivot, right? There was a huge pivot yesterday uh, in the webinar above that 722 area. And it put a high of 745. Had a huge, huge move in Tesla. Again, congratulations to all you guys uh, who caught that Tesla trade yesterday. So there was a sneaky pivot. And the reason why I, I don't put a lot of really aggressive sneaky pivots uh, on the Twitter feed, because you guys don't, you know, for all you guys are just trading on the Twitter feed, you guys don't get the, you know, you don't get the sense of exactly what's going on. If you're in the webinar, I'm, I'm literally co color commenting every second. This is about to happen. Uh, this is the channel. This is a sneaky pivot. We might fall into some supply here. Be careful here. There's a rising wedge here. You're getting all that stuff. So I really wanted to put the macro uh, macro level there. So what we did was I started buying uh, my game plan for today on Tesla was start buying it off the pre-market opening range highs. And here was the free market opening range highs of 746. So it took out that 746 and we got long off that opening print and it stalled out initially at 750. So I sold Tesla, right? I sold it and it came back in. Because remember, that 750 area was going to be huge because if you look at it, this is the whole range here. We've been talking about this range for weeks. So the second time around when it went through 750, got long again. The one thing that we did know, right? We did know before this trade was going to get really aggressive. We knew there was a shot at that first move only going to about 754, 755, just because of the just because of the supply zone here. So I got one the Tesla again. It traded up into that 754 level, which was good. Then we got it on a 60 minute bounce, right? Again, which you guys on the Twitter feed, you know, you don't have access to. But then we got it on a bounce. It bounced again, almost went green on the day again, and yada yada yada. It was pretty good. So the Tesla gave us a good opportunity, but now. We have a clean macro channel. Everybody see this channel up here, guys, for all you guys, especially if you trade Tesla. And again, it's far away. It's not going to go tomorrow. It's not going to go the next day. It could have been. Could have, would have, should have, right? But now the moral of the story is at least we do have a very, very viable macro pivot ahead of us. And if this does confirm, whether it's next week, the week after, you can see a really big expansion channel. It'll probably not do anything until earnings come out. So it's something probably not on the table for us, but you never, never know. So Tesla was really, really good. Uh, Amazon never got to the 33.85 level. Uh, Apple got to the 134 level and it was just sitting there. It was literally sitting there and it was ready to close over that 134 before uh, before everything got pulled. Uh, NVIDIA never got to the 520. CRM never got there. But this is where the smaller cap names started moving, moving really nicely as well. BCRX. Uh, 119012 needs to build. Here is BCRX, right? So it took out this whole 1190 $12 channel, uh, went all the way to the 1250s. I acted really, really well uh, the whole day. Uh, Mac really never, you know, never did anything. It got to like 1306 and then reverse, never really gave you a second entry. And that's the whole point, guys. If you trade the pivots for the PS60 theory, we always know about the second entry. Second entries, guys, you're not buying into the first print, it's second entries. Uh, MITK 16 supply needs to build. Here was MITK, right? Here was MITK. It took out the 16, went to 1640. So there's a lot of really good value 
and a lot of lower price names. And again, yeah, that's the whole point. Uh, first entry always is going to fail. That's the whole point. They're triggering stocks. Second entry sale, guys. Again, second entry, folks. It's always going to be uh, really, really good. Uh, Mealy had a monster move uh, off the watch list last night off that $9 area. Microsoft put up almost a $2 candle in the beginning as well. Uh, QS, big, big move. Congratulations to all you guys who caught that. We started seeing really big, aggressive call buying coming in uh, in the 37s, in the 35s, in the 50s. Really, really aggressive action. 3450 rejected twice. Uh, needs to build. Here was QS, right? You see this whole channel here? It took out the 3450 and went right to 36. And it would have been a lot better, again, if this market didn't uh, crap out on that news as well. So MITK, new highs. Pushing 35s, pushing 36s, uh, BCRX new highs, 36 on deck. So really, really nice moves. And the, the, the worst problem is we were so ready for beta for tomorrow. And unfortunately, these headlines screwed things up. But again, you make you get out of life, which you which you make of it. And again, if the old adage goes, life gives you lemons, right? You make lemonade. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Have an awesome Friday. And God willing, I'll see you guys all soon. Take care.